Angela, thanks for joining us today from CityWorks. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we have to obviously go back to your origin story and getting involved in CityWorks, which would start with your first ever alcoholic beverage. So take us through that story. Oh gosh, first ever alcoholic beverage. That's uh you can be many, honest. It's yeah, a safe many, space many, here. <laughs> <laughs> many, many years ago. Um, I won't say how many. Um, <laughs> I think it was probably the days when Zima was a thing, like oh. Zima malt beverage. Oof. Um, if you can imagine <laughs> back that far. I think it was probably a Zima at some party. I mean, this was like yeah, exactly. This is embarrassing. I'm actually admitting this, but um, yeah, I think that was it. I think that was my first alcoholic beverage. Yeah, Literally. like you started with a hangover. You didn't even. <laughs> I, <yourself>. did. <laughs> I did. I, I had no chance. I had no chance. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay, so then how did you go from drinking Zima? Obviously, your tastes uh, have progressed. Since oh, then. they've progressed. Thank God they've progressed. No, you know, getting in. Yeah, getting into uh, the restaurant industry and particularly with a group who is, you know, craft beer geeks, mm. um, I've been fortunate enough to learn about beer and try a slew of them. We have 90 beers on draft uh, at most of our restaurants, including City Works out in Schaumburg. <laughs> and uh, just the education that goes along with that and the variety of styles um, has been really fun, not only to learn about, but to kind of be able to taste test all of those and kind of find favorites and favorites kind of ebb and flow as, as time goes on and things get popular. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of sour beer now, which mm. is, uh, you know, kind of ebbing and flowing. And, and it, I think it's a, it's kind of a polarizing thing. You either love sours or you just find them disgusting. Um, but I'm in, a, I'm in the love camp. Me too. Right here with you. Yeah. Every now and then you get one of those ones that just tastes like straight, like red wine vinegar. And then you yes. understand why people are like, I can't do this, but yes. I still would rather have that taste sometimes <laughs> than like an IPA soapy taste. I have to agree with you. Plus, I mean, I like vinegar and I guess, yes, that, that flavor note is present in some of them. So mm. if you don't like vinegar or you don't like fruity, funky, right. um, yeah, probably not going to be your thing, but, but I love it. So 90 taps at CityWorks. So what goes into deciding what's going to be on tap and where you guys are sourcing your beers from? Yeah. yeah um, one of the really fun things that we decided to hone in on was local and celebrating local breweries. So we thought, you know, we're going to take 30 taps and just dedicate them to local. Um, and local could be hyper local as in the next town over or what we decided was uh, within 100 miles. So, um, you know, what is what is close and celebrated in the area that we can show off? Um, so we do that. And then we have about 10 taps that are dedicated to kind of rare, limited, rotating, uh, one-off um, brews. And so those are rotating on a pretty consistent basis. And then we kind of compiled after, you know, a number of years, we kind of compiled a core list of our favorites in a bunch of different categories. So what are the best IPAs, lagers, um, you name it. And we kind of created the rest of the taps based on that core list that our guests love, that we love. Um, and we've got a beverage director in house now that um, really is charged with uh, bringing the best onto the lineup. But it's ever changing, which is fun. Yeah. And obviously you guys are a poor house and an eatery. So tell me a bit about the food you have going on. Yeah. So the, the kind of cool thing about uh, City Works or Old Town Poor House um, is we like to think of it as the unique marriage of a really delightful restaurant and a great sports bar. It's kind of not one of either. It doesn't sit firmly in either camp. Um, we kind of blended it up and that that was born out of our owner's um, kind of love to go out, grab a beer, watch the game, but not have to necessarily be relegated to only fried food or only bar snacks. Um, so we wanted to do something on the food side that was um, a little elevated from scratch, you know, as often as possible. So you're going to see things, shareable dishes like buffalo shrimp. Um, of course, we've got like pretzel bites, but they're with an IPA cheese sauce. So like a little, little bit elevated over there all the way up to things like a pork chop entree or a nice salmon dish. Um, so if you're looking to, you know, eat healthy, you can do that. If you're looking to have more of a meal than a snack, you can certainly do that. Um, and, you know, we, we try to keep it grounded in American classics. And then how can we put our twist on those classics? 
Um, so you might see cheese curds, but we serve them with a smoked tomato coolie. So like Ooh. just that, that twist. Yeah. Yeah. Smoked tomato coolie. But it, <laughs> when you don't understand one of the words, that's how you know it's good. <laughs> exactly. You got to go with it. You're like, I like smoked tomatoes. So yes, we'll do this. Yes. That sounds amazing. I'm, I'm already on board cheese, tomato. It sounds like the fanciest, like mozzarella sticks you ever had in your damn life and, and really yes they are and melted cheese just that's it that's all you need to that's all you need to yeah. know done <laughs> now you mentioned that you've been in the hospitality industry for a minute here do yeah. you have any customer stories that stick out in your brain you know i do have a really fun kind of uh customer staff kind of just bar moment so um at the Boundary in Wicker Park in Chicago here, it was like the Boundary's heyday. The, the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup in 2010, okay? And that was the first time, you know, in many years that they had won. And back then I was uh, serving. And so the place was just packed. I mean, it was at capacity. Bartenders and servers just moving as fast as possible from start to finish, like just not slowing down for a minute. You've got the tickets printing out on the printer, just falling on the floor, I mean, uh, like, you know, feet long. Um, and it was just this really great, fun sports atmosphere, um, you know, home team. Every time they'd score a goal, we had this, this red light flash and we'd play the, the theme song, you know, when they score the goal, like, da, 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 you know, so we had that going. And then when they actually won the cup, I mean, it was like, people just lost their minds. Like, you know, the song starts playing, people are opening champagne, <laughs> standing on tables. I mean, it was, it was, it was just so much fun. It was such hard work, but you didn't realize it because everybody was just kind of celebrating whether you were working or not, you were caught up in this great moment. And um, I mean, hands down, it was the most money I had made in a serving or bartending shift. It was like, at the end of the night, it was just, you know, rewarding and, and, and incredible. So that was, that was probably one of my favorite, like bar guest staff moments. And that's the difference between that night being awesome. And that night being the worst night of your life oh is if you God. made money at the end of it. <laughs> Seriously, could you imagine? Like if I did all of that and walked out with like $50, I, you're right. This, that, that would not yep. be. Yeah. That is the day because it happens. You know, it happens. You yeah. have one of those brunch shifts. You've dealt with someone's kids all day and they've got scrambled eggs just all over the table of all yeah. over the floor. They need like four more orange juices. Of course you're out of orange juice that day. Right. And then they tip you five percent and you're like ah! yeah, on top of 10 other tables yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it definitely was not one of those but uh yeah I mean just what a blast and um you know Chicago sports you know obviously people oh, yeah. get behind the team and and if you're out of a place that you know is is great at at showing that and creating that atmosphere it's just it's just a blast yeah so what does uh City Works have coming up for the rest of 2022 yeah, so we actually just rolled uh, a new menu out. So we have been, you know, kind of poised and planning, uh, you know, through the ups and downs of COVID. And finally, we got to kind of come back and regroup on uh, how we can refresh the menu. We try to do that a couple of different times a year. So we just rolled a new menu. Um, we've got some old favorites back on there. We've got some brand new favorites. Um, we've got a, a Cajun linguine, we've got a sloppy joe, um, and we've just got some, some really great options uh, for groups. So groups from four to six, because, you know, we realize that maybe people don't want to dine out yet. Um, maybe they're still, you know, doing takeout for the family or whatever it is. So trying to have um, options for people who want to come out and, you know, dine in, which we're actually seeing in force lately. I mean, I think it's, People have been cooped up for a long time and, yep. you know, we're seeing private events come back and, and people out celebrating. So that's great. Um, but, you know, we still realize that that people want their takeout and they want to post up on their couch and that's cool too. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to get out into the ether? Let the people know, have the final word. Oh, I'd just say, you know, yeah. If you're looking, if you're itching to get out, you know, we've got you covered. We've got a, a big patio, definitely out in Schaumburg, but most, most of our restaurants have that big outdoor space. So as the weather gets nice here in the Chicago area um, and we're all itching to get outside, um, we certainly have that. And, and we'd love to, uh, to welcome everybody back, back out. Hell yeah. Well, thank you so much for hanging today, Angela. Thank you.